Hi, it's Dr. Steve Weiner, and today I'm going to talk to you about masseters. I'm going to talk to you about the anatomical considerations when you're injecting masseters with neuromodulators. So there are three reasons to inject masseters. One is you inject masseters because they're hypertrophy and are leading to clinching and bruxism. Number two, if you have TMJ disorders, it can relieve some of the TMJ discomfort, but it won't improve the internal derangement of the TMJ which is a lot of clicking and popping. It won't do anything for that. And number three, which is actually very popular, it's slimming the face with people that have hypertrophied and large masseters. This is done very frequently in Asia, but it doesn't affect people that have fat. What are the complications associated with this particular injection? So bruising is the most common, headaches, um, smile limitations are 0.15%, so very low. Paradoxical bulging is 0.49, so half a percent. Sunken cheeks, extremely low, about half a percent, and sagging, about 0.2 percent. So there was a study in 2019 by Schoen and Kerr that showed that when they injected 30 units of Botox per side, at 12 weeks they got a 12 percent average reduction in the masseter mass. Now, on some patients they repeated that, and at another 12 weeks, they got 24% reduction, and that was maintained for four years. A third group got three injections in the, another 12 weeks, and at that time, they got 42% reduction, and at four years, they got 40% reduction. So it's very effective and long-term results with injecting the masseters with Botox. On a separate study, there was progressive improvement when you did this injection up to three months by CT scan. There's another problem that I alluded to in the, in the complications about bulging after you inject the masseters. This is a rare phenomenon. It's 0.49%. And this photo is courtesy of Lee Kang and So in 2018. And they wanted to figure out why does this occur? So what they did is they dissected out the masseters in several people, cadavers obviously, and they found that there was an inferior tendon in the inferior one-third of the masseter, and there was anatomic variations associated with this tendon. So what they found was that there were basically three different variations. This variation covered zones four and five. This variation covered zones five and six, and then there was a variation that covered zones four, five, and six. So the first one was around 27%, the second one was around 23%, and the third one was about 50%. So what they found is that when you inject deeply into the masseters, that this tendon could inhibit the diffusion of the neuromodulator into the superficial portion of the masseter. So there's a superficial and a deep portion of the masseter. So if you inject in this area here, some of the diffusion is blocked by that tendon, and then you get bulging of the superficial muscle, like it's shown in this versus this. This is where you get the bulging in the superficial portion of the masseter. So that was the anatomic reason why people get it. So it's very easy to fix. You just inject the superficial portion with another dose of neuromodulator, and it's done. This is an ultrasound view of the masseter, showing a superficial portion, the deep inferior tendon, and the deep portion of the masseter. So this is another complication. Again, it's rare, but it affects the smile. And you can see that she's not smiling quite as wide on this side. And that's caused by uh, injection that hits the rhizorius muscle. So there was another study by Bay and Chow in 2014 that went over the variations of the rhizorius muscle. And this is very similar to the last one I showed you. They had different zones. And they found that the type A was in the third zone with 18%. The type B was around 20% was in the fourth zone. The type C, which was both three and four zone, was the most common, was about 53%. And then the type D was around 7% over here. And then there was one that covered sections two and three, and that was 2%. Often, the rhizorius muscle is absent in people that are from Africa, as well as the Chinese population. 
So the proposed injection technique after going through all these uh, studies are as follows. Injecting the lower third of the masseter to avoid the rhizoreus and other facial muscles below the line from the earlobe to the commissure. Number two, you do a retrograde injection that includes all levels of the masseter, so the deep as well as the superficial. And then three, they suggest three or four injections staying one centimeter away from the anterior border of the masseter. So in summary, injections of neuromodulators into the masseters are very effective, safe, and produce long-term results. You must inject retrograde in both the deep and the superficial aspects of the masseter to get the best results, as well as inferiorly to avoid the rhizoreus muscle and one centimeter back from the anterior border. Thanks for listening.